Where do you think you come from? You can't come from nowhere. So here you are again. And if you don't believe me, I always say, anyone who doesn't believe in reincarnation in this life will certainly believe in reincarnation <laughs> in your next life. <laughs> next question. Nobody has used their cell phone to call me after they die to confirm they're hanging about, waiting to choose a more appropriate copulating couple than their last choice. Okay, recently, last rains retreat in October, so this, this is a true story. There was a uh, Sri Lankan lady, she'd been listening to my talks a lot, I think she's been over here, and she called me, she had an emergency, during the retreat time, not really supposed to receive many calls, she said, can you please help my brother? He's got a very, very bad blood cancer, we sent him to Singapore for treatment, but nothing is working, he's now paralysed, he's only got a few days to live, can you please talk to him? So of course, you know, you sort of don't worry about retreats and stuff, of course you help out. So, for two evenings in a row, I talked to him on the phone. You know, and he was so weak, you know, when he spoke to me, he spoke very slowly, and you could have to listen very, very carefully to listen to what he was saying. No, but I gave him some advice about dying and about letting go. And then the third night he died. So you know, I caught him just in time, which is wonderful. And no, he was paralyzed, so you know, he could only they had to just he could only just about speak. The next evening, his sister called me to tell me that he died the night before. But also to tell me, he said, You won't believe this Ajahn Brahm, it's absolutely true that this morning I got an email from him just saying thank you. And the email was sent about six, eight hours after he died. The email, it's true, email from beyond the grave. <laughs> so actually you're wrong here, that people actually do. They don't get cell phones and that's just, that's passe, that's so sort of 20th century, this is no, 21st century. Sent emails. <laughs> Twitters. Have you checked your Twitter account yet to see if there's anything? <laughs> so now I told people, now I know what Gmail means. <laughs> Ghost mail. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke at that time, but that's only the joke part of it, but that's a true story. No, there's, and there's no way they checked out, there's no way he could have pre programmed that because he'd been paralyzed for days before you know, he died. So they got an email from him, certainly after he died, just saying the word thank you. So there you go, whoever wrote this, yeah. Check your cell phone, check, <laughs> check your email. And there are many people who have their stories about reincarnation. And you can read about them, the best book to read is uh, Professor Ian Stevenson's book. Now he did a, such excellent work about people who could remember their past lives. And you know, there's many, many people. But on this retreat, if you really get into some deep meditation, this is one of the things I usually teach later on, to confirm for your very self that you've lived before. What you do, you have to get some really nice meditation. So you're sitting here you know, a couple of hours, really blissed out, having a lot of energy, a lot of mindfulness. When you come out of the meditation, before you know you uncross your legs and go and have a cup of tea or something, just make the mental suggestion, just once, very simply, what is my earliest memory? Just say that. If you've got enough stillness and power, almost immediately something will come up which you will recognize as a very early memory usually from your early childhood when you were a baby. It won't be like a memory, like you remember what you were doing yesterday. It will be a re-experiencing of that time. You're back there. Your eyes closed, being able to see, hear, and even ask questions about what's going on around you. That's actually how it happens. Then you say, earlier please. And keep pushing it back until you get in to an experience of your previous life. And again, this is a re-experiencing of it, clear, 
So it's not one of these memories, you know, where did I put my, my glasses? I'm sure I put them somewhere. <laughs> no, this is actually clear and very, very convincing. And actually that's how it works. And many people in these retreats have done that. And it blows their mind. Yeah, they actually they do re remember their past lives. Just like it says in the old books. You do need very powerful meditation, but you don't need... Some people seem to do it without the jhanas, but pretty close onto the jhanas. So you get very powerful meditation, very peaceful. And you just ask, remember to ask that question. What's my earliest memory? You can't force it. It comes up straight away. It doesn't come up at all. And then, that will convince you once and for all. You can read books. You can be people you trust. All that does is sort of convince you, oh, that, that's interesting, that might be the case. But if you rem remember it yourself, then there's no doubt anymore. And of course, that will change your whole life. Simply because you realise, and this is absolutely true, there is reincarnation, there is a rebirth. This is not your only life. Now imagine how that would change the way you look at life. Death is just, you know, another, here we go again. Been there, done that. And just the whole attachment business. If it's just one life, this one life is really, really important. If it's one amongst thousands, it's not so important. You become far more equanimous to you know the ups and downs of life. Far wiser. You see the big picture. So check that out during this retreat. And don't do it this evening or the next day, it's too early. When you really get some good meditation going, at the end just ask yourself, what's my earliest memory? and see what comes up. Any questions about that? Yeah? Yeah, okay, that's a very good question. Thank you for that, because I should have said that if you do get a past life experience, the closest experience of your past life to this life is your death moment. And that's just so strong that sometimes people have tried this you know, they've gone to the babyhood, and sometimes they've got in their mum's womb, and the next thing they got, they don't like at all. Because you know, it's not just remembering, it's re-experience. Re-experience, you know, the very unpleasant feeling of dying. And they've come out and they've told me, I don't want to ever do that again. And so, because of that, I tell people nowadays, if you do that technique, what's my earliest memory, you do come across an unpleasant, quickly say, earlier please. That's all you need to do. And you just go back earlier, before that death moment. So yes, you can experience yourself in your previous life. Some other sort of powerful moment of that life. It could be a happy moment, but you don't experience that death moment, which is usually very uncomfortable. So you can actually get it, it's interesting. Answers a lot of questions, you know, about who you are, why you are, why you're hanging out with the people you do. Please enhance our knowledge about walking meditation, or also a bit more about keeping the mind still.